it's time for pretty good news from the Wisconsin Maritime Museum. Welcome aboard. I am Shane Lee of the Wisconsin Maritime Museum in Manitowoc. I have some pretty good news for you because we are celebrating at the museum 50 years with our submarine USS Cobia in Manitowoc. Let's take a stroll down memory lane. The Gato class submarine USS Cobia SS245 was built in Groton, Connecticut in 1943. She served six war patrols in the Pacific Ocean in World War II, sinking 13 ships and rescuing seven downed airmen. Cobia returned to Connecticut and was decommissioned in 1946. To those who sailed on her, Cobia was so much more than a ship. The Cobia was somebody's home, you know, and those men had an attachment to her. Granted, most of them are gone now if not all, I don't know, but she's still here. In 1951, she was recommissioned to train submarine school students and decommissioned again in 1954. Captain Albert Becker, the commanding officer on Cobia's first five patrols, was in charge of the reserve fleet at the time and selected his old boat for the job. In 1959, Cobia was towed from Connecticut through the St. Lawrence Seaway and tied up along USS Tautog in Milwaukee. Captain Becker's love for his submarine was made obvious to his son, who visited Cobia for the first time in 2019. When he walked through the sub, through officer's country, and saw his father's stateroom with the uniform hanging there and his mother and father's picture standing there, I could see his eyes. The look on that man's face was just unbelievable. In 1968, the Manitowoc Submarine Memorial Association hoped to bring a Manitowoc-built submarine back to Manitowoc. At that time, there were still six Manitowoc boats still in active service, but they were scheduled to be scrapped in the next three years. The association was unable to raise enough money to repair those subs, so their best option was to acquire Cobia. I think the Cobia would have been proud to have been built in Manitowoc, and she's doing an excellent job representing her sisters. And two, the, the, the older folks from Manitowoc who helped build these things, this has got to be a kick for them. It took nine hours for the tug Lauren Castle to tow Cobia 75 miles from Milwaukee to Manitowoc on August 17, 1970. Approximately 500 people lined the riverbank to watch the arrival and Cobia's docking between the 8th and 10th Street bridges. Manitowoc artist Dave Dezio was 10 years old when he watched Cobia pass by his house about one mile south of the Manitowoc Harbor. The event impacted him so much that he painted it many years later. And I had never seen a submarine before, and it was neat to see. It was just, you know, we've seen a lot of the history in the city of Manitowoc, but I haven't seen a sub in itself. And compared to any, any of the other boats that were out on the lake, it was very interesting to see. On August 23rd, about 400 people toured the boat after the dedication ceremony. On May 28, 1986, Kobe was moved to her current berth next to the Wisconsin Maritime Museum. Captain Becker climbed aboard for the last run of USS Cobia. The museum presented a plaque that same day for her designation as a National Historic Landmark. This is an awesome boat and I hope she stays here forever. Today, Cobia is the most historically intact World War II submarine in the country, all thanks to the hard work of the museum founders 50 years ago. I personally want to thank all of the many volunteers who tirelessly work on Cobia to keep her looking ship shape and worthy of her status as an International Submariner's Memorial. In this week's featured artifact, our Emily Shadell talks about her favorite piece of the museum as she attempts to solve a mystery of an artifact she found in her own home. Hello, my name is Emily Shadell, and I'm a front desk employee here at the Wisconsin Maritime Museum. I'm here to talk to you today about my favorite artifact in the museum, which is this silver Manitowoc Shipbuilding Incorporated pin. That pin came into effect after 1952, when the Manitowoc Shipbuilding Company turned into Manitowoc Shipbuilding Incorporated. In the year 1952, uh, they split the company up into three divisions. So that's when it turned into Manitowoc Shipbuilding Incorporated. And the pin changed from that white pin to the silver pin above, which is the one that's my favorite. It actually has a connection to my family. So a few years ago, I found a pin just like that silver one uh, in my dad's workshop on an old radio. 
He wasn't quite sure where it came from. He, uh, he fixes stuff up for people, so he figures it may have gotten dropped off with something he was fixing. And as far as we know, nobody in my family has worked at Manitowoc Shipbuilding Company. Uh, so right now I'm trying to figure out who that pin belongs to. Uh, so I'm going to search through some records upstairs um, in our collections, and hopefully we'll get some answers as to who that pin uh, belongs to. Thanks, Emily. I know for a fact that no one in my family worked at Manitowoc Shipbuilding Company, but somebody did just celebrate a birthday. Delivering our joke of the day is my 82 years young grandmother, Beverly McGill. I wonder what kind of vegetable is not allowed on a ship? Hmm, let me see. Oh yes, it's leeks. Yes, I did it. <laughs> Way to go, Graham. Isn't she simply the best? Just a reminder, no matter how bad things may seem, at least grandmothers are learning technology and other new ways to show us just how much they care, even from a distance. And that is pretty good news. Pretty Good News is funded in part by a grant from the Wisconsin Humanities Council with funds from the National Endowment for the Humanities.